so vitrectomy in wet md patients when and how to proceed this is my topic thank you dr devdula chakravarty for inviting uh, for giving me the chance to talk in your ic and thanks to aius for uh, organizing our ic so vitrectomy in wet md so usually uh, the subretinal hemorrhage uh, it is uh, it is it is the main reason for uh, which we are doing the vitrectomy in wet md patients the other causes of subretinal hemorrhage the md pcv macroaneurysm stroma and blood dyscrasias out of these five causes md and pcv also almost go, uh, goes uh, hand in hand uh, in uh, principal for, uh, for the principal cause of subretinal hemorrhage so usually the prognosis of submacular hemorrhage is poor because of this radial effect toxicity to the iron and hemosiderin fibrin infiltration in between the inner and outer segments of the portal septum causing destructive shearing of the cells and shearing of the outer segments it can cause uh, from the contraction of the uh, blood can happen so submacular uh, scar formation is the ultimate reason for the poor visual prognosis so the individual opportunity within first two weeks because of this extensive damage permanent damage may happen so usually the treatment that is depends on the size and the duration of the hemorrhage so uh, usually this uh, algorithm we are maintaining before going uh, for any kind of uh, vitrectomy in case of weight md uh, like it is small uh, site in less than 40 cm and it is recent that less than 2 weeks usually nemo displacement is enough and anti vagal injection is also enough there is no need of need for vitrectomy but if it is a medium size vitrectomy uh, blood more than 40 cm but not extending beyond the temporal vascular arcade and usually in between the in between one uh, two to four weeks so usually cocktail after doing vitrectomy cocktail of subretinal tpa anti major and air injection is sufficient and if it is mass massive uh, more than 40 cm extending beyond the temporal vascular kit so go for uh, go for the either vitrectomy followed by subretinal blood removal by retinotomy and uh, or you can go for the, the six to seven clock hours retinectomy peripheral retinectomy followed by blood drainage or you can go for blood removal subretinal blood removal followed by rp correct patch graft tra transplantation if it is very much long standing so if it is small size like in this case of my patient you can see the small uh, subretinal hemorrhage so after single injection anti uh, is sufficient uh, sufficient so in cases of medium size uh, blood if it is not extending beyond the temporal vascular arcade and most of the blood is inferiorly and phobia is just covered with the subretinal blood so in these cases retinotomy along with this subretinal tpa the fusoplasminogen uh, activator that is rtpa and this dose is 50 microgram in 0.05 ml usually coming in the uh, actilized actilized uh, actilized uh, 20 milligram in 20 ml of injection you can just use 0.05 ml uh, out of it and now uh, coming uh, it is a case of sub neurosensory retina sub rp hemorrhage vision from the close to face we are accurate and you can see the sub both are sub uh, neurosensory sub rp hemorrhage and after doing vitrectomy uh, i've done the pvd induction the injecting tpa uh, sub retina sub uh, just be behind the neurosensory retina as well as a uh, sub rp basically uh, sub rp uh, tpa is not uh, not ad advocated because of systemic absorption is more so wait for some time usually it, uh, it's 15 to 45 minutes waiting time it is required for the adequate clot lysis then inject subretinal uh, antiphage along with air injection do uh, free air exchange so after this kind of intervention you may get this kind of result so it's a very good vision improved a lot and you can see the complete uh, result, uh, complete resolution of the subretinal sub rp blood so coming to my second case uh, where there is vitreous hemorrhage and subretinal hemorrhage was incident diagnosed you may not you may think it is a case of post brp or post diabetic if it's a diabetic post pdr case but still after the clearing the vitreous uh, vitreous hemorrhage you may detect this kind of sub macular hemorrhage not that much still the uh, macula is almost covered with the subretinal part so inject subretinal tpa and uh, uh, and just blob like elevation in two three, three areas but basically most of the blood is uh, inferiorly so little bit of elevation is required and followed by subretinal uh, anti vagef and air is uh, sufficient to uh, manage this kind of cases and uh, post operatively you can may get subretinal old blood uh, inferiorly but macula is absolutely clear you can see except subretinal neovascular membrane is there these are all non drainage techniques this is coming to my drainage techniques. 
vitrectomy uh, done and after uh, vitrectomy you are injecting subvitreal TPA uh, for this massive subvitreal hemorrhage then produce, uh, just did small uh, paramacular retinotomy after waiting for 15 to uh, 30 minutes and you can see the subvitreal pro uh, clotted blood as uh, uh, blood is already coming out and after adequate drainage of blood, you can do the fluid exchange and do laser and all around the uh, retinotomy site. So, retinotomy inject some kind of anti VEGF, yeah, whatever is available to, and followed by uh, silicon injection. So, slowly, slowly, positively, vision improved still after three months of silicon removal. Vision, vision gained until finally six by eight in vision. So, coming to my another case, a more extensive hemorrhage retina detachment. These are the more severe kind of situation. We can see the behind the eye well, there is totally full of blood, and this kind of blood is quite brown color because a lot of RP is released in this kind of situation. And behind the blood, you can see the totally retina is elevated and total retina and hemorrhage retina detachment. So, in this kind of situation, subretinal TP is very good. I should say two to three quadrants subretinal TP injection with just lies the blood and if you do the retinectomy or retinotomy, the blood will come out like just like water. So if you, you have to wait it for some time. In this situation, I am doing the uh, temporal retinectomy, six to seven o'clock hours retinectomy and remove the blood as much as possible and the trim the anterior retinal map also then inject some uh, uh, tear seal just over like the, uh, over the retina and do the laser all along and complete your laser and Finally, you may uh, do the silicon or PF cell uh, exchange, inject the silicon on the left hand and uh, remove the PF cell with the right hand. So, the, after uh, you can see the retina is looking decent. So, uh, post operatively, after 10 months of uh, silicon revolution, gained 6 by 36 vision after PR inaccurate situation. Now, from PR in a consistent another case, hemorrhagic retinal detachment with cataract. Finally, patient gains six by 36 patient after 36 months. So, now coming to the subretinal blood removal, the total locus RP correct patch it up transplantation where uh, it is not elevated. You have to create, create, uh, create a blob like elevation of detachment, but where the retina is already elevated, like hemorrhagic retinal detachment. You can do it uh, peripheral retinectomy, uh, temporal uh, creating janet to uh, remove the blood and then remove the blood uh, all along uh, the whole as much as possible um, coming uh, to the submacular area. And when there is placing your muscular membrane, is, uh, uh, it is uh, detected. You have to remove it gently, especially with the island forcep. And uh, finally, you have to remove it uh, almost uh, and uh, just try to remove the blood. And do gentle potting from the feeder base from the feeder basis, and finally you can go for the RP core and pad function. These are not meticulous surgery with the like bimodal situation using sandler So I take the RP core and pad graph from, uh, from the under uh, from uh, so, uh, super the PF cell and remove the PF cell and again settle the uh, RD and finally you may get some kind of good result out of uh, a good result almost i can say 50 to 60 percent success will be available with this around extensive surgeries so high fema extensive scarring hypotonia and recurrence of subretinal blood are some post-operative problems you have to take care of all these situations thank you